Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com slash using your power. Over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Today's episode, we'd like to recommend David and Goliath, Underdogs, Misfits, and The Art of Battling Giants by Malcolm Gladwell. Welcome to Using Your Power. I'm David Andrews. And joining me is How are you doing, man? Good. I just thought I'd just have my name. Why not? That's fine. <laughs> what are you getting into today? Well, I just wanted to kind of post the uh, loop that we had started to hold uh, on the last episode. The last one. Review Welcome products. to Using Your Power. Uh, I'm David Andrew Weep, and joining me is V. So, you know, I just wanted to kind of finish up that. Vee? I know we were running a little That's over good. our time. Uh, I just thought I'd emphasize my own name today. We Why that not? So That's fine. An hour and 15 minutes. So, yeah. what are you I just wanted to kind of, uh, well, I just wanted to kind of so close the uh, loop that we had started the point that I want to close with on our last episode for review products, either for fun and to make profit. So, you know, I just wanted to kind of finish up that. I know we were running a little over our time. We try to keep it at an hour, and I think on that episode we were close to an hour and 15 minutes so yeah. i just wanted to kind uh, of uh, tested, end up uh, that so let's start maybe beer, there and say and then you know say, the well, point that i want to bring up was uh, market research so that was another great way uh, we can do so a lot of times there's a lot of these marketing companies out there that'll pay you to come in and review their product and they'll actually pay you to drink that do that. Yogurt. So, you know, I've been to a bunch of them where, uh, tell us what you, thought you know, about I tested, uh, I guess, taste tested kind of, uh, beer, and then they would say, well, this tell us about our beer, tell us about our marketing, one, so look at the packaging, tell us if it goes with the taste, and tell us about all that kind of stuff. And then I looked at another one for yogurt, it was a blank bottle, so it's kind of a Yoplait type style. And you would drink that yogurt, and tell us about the flavor, tell us what you thought about the texture and everything, and what kind of yogurt would you think this would be closest to. And then I did another one actually on candy, which was kind of an interesting one too so you got to sit there and eat candy got paid 50 bucks for an hour and uh, taste candy and you really kind of got to say you know did that flavor actually taste like the apple flavor that they were going for or the cherry flavor they were going for so kind of a neat way too so if you're a market research type company this is a great way to have people or you can also understand what your market's looking for and it's a great way to review your products before you put it into the market for the masses i think i did make right focus group type stuff yeah exactly and i mean thomason kind of works the same way no, you, did you can say either Thomason, become a reviewer I, I mean, and have people send you their pitches for and, stuff that you want to uh, you know, review on your site, or you can also go you there know, and get your product reviewed. So it has you know both of those, those elements scale, built right into it. So I think that's I think I did make that suggestion, but just in case it wasn't clear, yeah, wanted exactly. to make sure I mentioned that again. Let's get into our actual Thomason, but I mean, I just want to give the example based on the things I've done. And you know, focus groups are something that I think a lot of people, you know, even if you're a blogger or a podcaster, is something that you kind of do across this idea on a small scale yeah, for it was actually yourself a book that we and, or you can hire other people out there that do exactly that uh, yeah exactly you know, by, uh, awesome. so Gladwell. let's get so into our actual topic for today so what are we going to be talking about today myself you had proposed this idea of talking about would you rather be a big fish in a small pond or a small fish in a big pond and i know you kind of came across this idea did you say it was in a book yeah it was actually in the book that we suggested on the audible here there you go david and goliath uh you know by malcolm gladwell so i you know i came up on that book i've been listening to it on audible Should myself I right and into my I said you know what let me take a uh, all right listen so to i mean it, i'm gonna I really argue like the idea the that he was talking about it and i said you know well what, fish in a small what, pond. would i rather be okay. a big and fish i do have my reasons for that and, you know but i am the idea of the small pond we've heard about you know, this as we're growing up so i thought it was a really interesting talk that we could have too so i just thought about like why would i want to be a big right on should i get right into my i think yeah it's easy to get all right so i mean i'm gonna argue for the most part throughout this episode that i'd rather be a big fish in a small pond okay and i do have my reasons for that but I am going to come to some other, right? that you know, kind of be diverging local, local paths on this towards the end a, of the episode too. Like so I just thought about like, like why would I want to be a big fish local in a small pond? But I, I think that's it's part easy of to get fairly means, right? local recognition or industry recognition. In like if you're like, an online you're space or an online business owner, even just getting recognized within your industry, right? Because that would kind of be your local locality. But if you were a local business like a restaurant or something, you know, we all need about that clients and sometimes having too many clients. But I think that's part of what that means, right, is, is if you are a big fish in a small so pond, it means like, very you know, you're kind of standing process, on the top of your industry I think when in you are your locality or in your, in your niche. Industry, it means you have a steady stream of clients that is 
is more you profitable. Choose the ones that you want so, to work with because there's kind of you know, a never ending supply of them. And sometimes and having too many to clients is bad because then we have to grow and then we have to hire and put new systems in place. So growth can actually be a very expensive process. But maybe some I think when you are well recognized in your industry, you have a steady stream of clients and then you can choose the ones that you want to work with because there's kind of a never ending supply of them. That's just how they run. Have to so overwhelm like, well, yourself with more than you can handle. You can actually even create a like, waiting list if that's something that you, know, you want to do. And I know some people do that, looking. right? Okay. Whether you know, it's some restaurants or maybe some people so there, there are spas or whatever. I mean, there's a waiting list to get in there. I think even it offers you the ability to when we're booked out months in advance, we can't bring you in. So when you're big, I mean, that's just how they run things. So you're like, well, local level or a few months in advance, and like, we don't do that. When more awards, our next three months are booked, and that's all we're looking at. Okay. Competition. That's what you got. Things like that. So they're they're obviously a big deceptive. Pond, and it might pond. be too much. You know, I think it, it on offers you the ability to win more, which can be deceptive, right? When you're, you know a, you when you're when you're a big fish in a small pond, basically in the short term, on a anyway, local those, level, those or in, again, with your niche or industry, you could win more awards, more sponsorship deals, currently have as win well. competitions and, and things uh, like big that. Big fish. Can I mean, it can be deceptive, and it might be too much. You know, backpatting on your own part after a while to just keep winning things locally because you know you can. But I think in the short term, anyway, those those things can help you gain more national or greater recognition than, train than you currently have as well. Be involved in a particular being sport and a big fish can mean having so more having that, expertise that and built authority in your particular in authority, you subject matter, industry, or whatever it is that, you that you do. You maybe you're an athlete yourself uh, and stand and, out. You know, because you, you are leverage that authority you know, into sponsorship the local deals or you leverage that authority into teaching others how to train themselves to be involved in a particular sport and earn money from that. So having that built-in expertise and authority Authority, you become the go-to person. You can also easily differentiate yeah, yourself and stand out just because um, you are, I mean, there are a couple other options you know, quote unquote, the local record or holder, yeah. right? Not the world record fish, holder, but the local right? record holder. Kind of you are kind of the best person in, in um, your space. So like standing out is right not hard. No, I, like I like the, the idea, and this, I agree with you too. I'd rather be the big fish in a small pond versus the small fish in a big pond because I mean, there are a couple other options as well. You could be a small fish in a small pond, or you could be a big fish. A big pond, right? But that's right. obviously, we're looking at a slightly different World comparison. Um, well, but I do like that thinking too, as well, right? And to, I like the example of how, being the record holder in, you know, for example, in, in your city versus kind of like in the world, right? Because yeah. as you, you can still be the best in your city, and, and people come after trying to beat your record, right? And, and that's kind of how people get to progress into, you know, world class athletes as well, right? They have to become the best in their city before they can be the best in their state or province, and then the country, and then in the world. Right. So you know, it's kind of what the progression usually um, is. More and as you get bigger, else, typically, okay. yeah, bigger and exactly. better and faster. What's your first point there? So running type my sport. Point was, um, um, people you know, keep going really after you and try to beat your records. Be honest, and that's when the endorsements also come. Biblical, uh, people want to pay you and, and uh, be sponsoring you. In the book, uh, so you can be you know, the big fish, you know, standing out more than everybody else out there. Yeah, exactly. What's your first point there? My point was, you know, I really liked the title of the book. To be honest, uh, David and Goliath. I mean, it's, I don't know the full it's biblical. He even starts with the biblical story of David and Goliath, uh, Goliath in the book dressed, uh, as well. So he kind of goes through that and really explains, um, you know, the concept of David and Goliath using the sto- using the story, the, uh, right? And uh, a lot of us have probably heard of it, but he David looked at it in a slightly get, different you know, way, and he said, you know, kind of combat. He looked at again. I don't know the full story, so I forgive me on that. But he looked at the way Goliath was dressed, and he looked at his height, and he looked at the words he had actually said. Else, right? So supposedly you actually said everybody in the, in the, uh, fought the battle, right? And to lost, David, right? David and David didn't want to get in a fist to fist kind of combat with him. He wanted, he knew in order to beat Goliath, he had to do something different. And I think that's exactly what big fish do. They think different than the masses. They do something different than everybody else, right? So if you look at everybody else who had fought Goliath up to the time and lost, David had to do something that was completely different. So he changed his strategy, and that's what big fish do. They David change their strategy says, and find you know, ways to do something I'm gonna keep my that will make them successful. And if the they're not successful, it's something different, right? And you know, like we said uh, previously uh, he's dressed in on different episodes as well, gear. if you so keep doing the same thing over and over, expecting different results, that's insanity. You know, that's what Einstein said. So it made sense, right? So when David in the story looks at it, he says, you know, I'm going to use my slingshot. I'm going to keep my distance from him. He looked at the way that Goliath was actually dressed. He said, you know, he's head to toe. He's dressed. In like protective looking, right? gear, exactly so even if I so got super close to this guy, how am I expecting very good, 
expecting to beat them. And he looked at, you know, for the openings. And that's what good business people, good strategies are, is looking for that opening, looking for the right niche market, and going in there and becoming the number one in your market by looking at where other people are not looking, right? And that's exactly what he did. So that story is not just biblical. It's very good business principles that are being taught there as well, right? And there's a lot of detail. Um, um, you know, but again, supposedly what David in the words know, he said is that Goliath said, hey, come closer, closer to me. Well, so and then they look at, well, why would he say something like that? Why would he need way. to close You're the exactly distance, right? right? And they start looking at, you know, potentially maybe uh, David and Goliath's Goliath was suffering from a giganticism and, you know, his vision was blurry and poor. And there's a lot of different theories there. But again, David knew, no, I didn't want to get close to you because if I get close to you, I know I will not So if I can beat you from afar, that's probably a better way. You're exactly right. A lot of people People have analyzed to begin that with. So David and Goliath's story and then come up with uh, theories I like that or even yeah, explanations as to why David was able to, to be you know, Goliath. But you know, the main thing is he went after the weakness. What it is that that sought for opportunities and he decided not to wear the full armor himself because he knew that would be heavy and it would just weigh him down. And he wasn't a soldier or a trained soldier to begin with. So all those kinds of things factored in. I like that a lot. Yeah, I think we all should look for opportunities. You know, it can be hard to see, but just I identify what it is that that's missing or where that, the weakness is or where you can become stronger in, in what you do and emphasize that more. Absolutely. And I think the other part of the story it kind of mentions or, or at least uh, people have um, said in the part of the story is the reason he doesn't want to wear um, gear as well. He's not used to wearing it. Exactly. It's an extra weight that he's not used to carrying. Uh, the way he uses his slingshot is very different with the gear on and with the gear off. And, I mean, it speaks volumes to the way we do business as well, the way we podcast the way we blog, the way you go out there and, and run your right? company, no matter what company you run, right? If you're doing things that uh, you're not you used to doing just like and just copying else, other people uh, okay, wear my and armor, aren't successful, that's wearing probably armor, a reason you're not wear, successful because uh, you're just you know, copying what other people are doing, real not really figuring out what you're good at and how to implement what's good for you, right? So, I mean, it's a great way to look at how to become a big fish in a small pond, right? And if David had thought as a small fish, you know, he would have been thinking just like everybody else, okay, I got to wear my armor because the last wearing armor, I got to wear out, uh, you know, I got to carry the slingshot. I got to get real close to him and try to hit him from really close. And, and if he had done what everybody yeah, else right. was doing with the That's swords, right. nice. you know, he would have probably right. come I'm to the give same a little bit of a, death that I guess here. everybody else made. Basically, yes, exactly. You know, and I think we even talked about that in the previous the episode on industry. undifferentiation and or finding your voice becoming an or being author unique locally, and standing out. I know has in your in your particular industry. It's kind of the same concept. This doesn't just apply to me. That I've trailblazed a path for others. I'm sure there's been other. I want to give a little bit of an example. Here, authors, basically, and, you, know, you know, those who have written people know that I have a book that's like that, but new music my point industry being that, you know, and that trail you know, becoming an author locally, I, I know has inspired others to become saying, yeah, I authors that. as well. And that this trail doesn't necessarily mean more that I've that. obviously trailblazed a path for others. I'm sure there's been other Calgary authors, in fact, I know there have been other Calgary authors, we may be launching, you know, those who've written books in Camor and stuff like that. But my point being that I might have, you know, that trail maybe was placed for me and I followed that trail, but now other people are saying. <laughs> yeah, I want to follow that that but, trail too, and I'm hearing you know, more and more I of think that. Obviously, writing really a book takes more a lot of effort, and that's like something we talked about in our sort of business in series or business a certain product we may be launching. Like we have mm. radio <laughs> stations, we have I may be, music stores, I might or have. Instrument <laughs> stores where people can buy and purchase instruments. We have recording studios, and there's other services for musicians. But I would say really, it's more applicable in the sense of like establishing myself sort of in the music business niche in Calgary. Like we have we radio stations, hall, we have I think that's music stores or instrument stores where people can go to buy and purchase not instruments. We have recording studios, local, you know, and, and looking at the you know, there's other services for musicians, but I would say we're fairly limited in terms of somebody who's consistently been a people music are really business from person all over. It's not just within the industry in Calgary, but sort of establishing myself and I think that's that big for me been a little bit of a differentiator. Not that my business is entirely local. You know, I am looking at the global scheme of things person and I think for, with search engine do. results no, and some I think of the things I've done SEO wise and content creation wise still people are really coming from all them, over so it's not just people gonna be in Calgary but just sort of sure establishing myself as, as that bigger right, no, fish great, in a small right, pond within I Calgary mean, just to kind of go back to the definitely first, has that effect of being you know the goal to person for for what I do now I think some people just based on feedback I've gotten still aren't clear on what I do for them so that's something that I'm going to be working on moving forward just to make sure the value but there are a lot of clear. people who are not right. part no, of that's that great way of looking at it. And I mean, just to kind of go back to the books first, I mean, that's how I came It's a good point. I mean, there's a lot 
of people because who have wrote books. I know we went to that Michael Chabon, and the yeah. whole the event was put on, on by and people said, hey, who were um, for you. the writer community. Writers, community. You community right? So, I mean, it's and a great it thing that people are doing again, out there. But there are a lot of people who are not part of that writing community that are have their own writing community, and you have your own. I mean, that's how I came upon you, and not because you were writing, but that's something you obviously had within yourself, and you wrote your book. You actually took the time and wrote it, and I said, hey, let me read it. I want to edit it for you. I don't mind giving you my viewpoints. And it allowed me to, again, say, look, I'm going to compile you know, everything. And also look at the things I was doing. I know I was just kind of getting started with my website. And I knew as well from Discovery Life today that I do like need to uh, have some sort of product. And I know a lot of people are writing books, and sometimes books are overused, I think. But, I mean, if you have something of value to say, people will see that, especially if you have a music site. And you're saying, look, I'm going to compile everything and put it easy for you to do. I mean, there's a lot of people we know that already do that in different markets. Something, Someone like Tim Ferriss, for example, Every We've day. talked about him on different Read episodes with Tools of Titans. So you can get he's done that quite a bit, right? He compiled all his different interviews and kind of gave nice summaries of everything uh, he's and done and really made it easy for people right? to and digest his thousands and thousands of hours of content. And right. that's exactly what books the do. Of, of uh, they make it really easy for yeah, people to great. get the information Obviously, so they don't have somebody to like, go on the website every single day and read through pages and pages of content saying you can get everything you want here and I'll make it really easy for you, whatever your price point may be. And you make it really simple for people, right? And grow my um, and, and that's a great and way to do it, you know. I offer right, just being the curator of, of that type of content. I think they're looking yeah, for I think something that's great. more than obviously, you know, with somebody like like me, the book is part of the value proposition. Yeah, no, sure. I think what people example, are, you know, kind of looking for is sales. what is that service you know, that you offer? What is something that I can, you know, purchase so that I can grow my music career? And obviously, you know, I offer coaching and I have books and courses, but I think they're looking for something more than maybe just a one-time purchase and and something that's more hands-on, which is something I'm working on. Yeah, no, for sure. And just to kind of give an example, so even really myself when I was in sales, you know, I started off as the small fish in a big pond because, you know, anytime you start anything, you're typically so starting from a place of n uh, no results, right? unless you've already had results you know, and you're starting a business goes, from that. You know, and then, I mean, you're starting off a little bit different. Pond, but, you know, starting in sales and car sales or home sales, I started off not knowing a lot and I had to really learn a lot from the people who had been able to do things, right? So people, my managers or supervisors or whoever. So I started off small, but I learned to gradually grow them, myself so you know, but as, you know as, as the analogy like goes you know as a fish words, is in its pond it'll continue to grow to the size of the pond it's in right and that's exactly mm -hmm. what I did so I to, right? over I time to learning through books and studying no, and, and watching pond, my, the people that I worked with and seeing how they were presenting out they were doing this space where using their words verbatim I couldn't be them you know but using the concepts of what they were saying and making them my own words I can then take those concepts and sell cars and sell homes and sell insurance and I was able to right I was able to be a big fish. Now, I wasn't in my own pond. Sure, I was still in their space. pond, but I was able to do that, right? Different. So now coming but into this space, space where playing in, it's, you know, my own website, it's our own, it's my own business. This is our, uh, our uh, mine and David's podcast. So this is our own space again with a separate business. But this is us being our big fish in our own pond, right? We're not having to go into somebody else's pond. Sure, we play in a bigger space. That's something a little bit different. But that space that we're playing in, we're not in competition with anybody. We're looking to network and be certain know, subjects uh, affiliated you with different people right we're not looking to say hey music, we're going to be number one and you're going to be number two I don't think there's such a thing there's people who do things well and there's people who do things better than other people doing yourself well within yeah and I think this is a whole thing of perspective and position because we can position ourselves within a small pond by going more niche into certain subjects when you are starting not be an expert on music but you know if you are an expert on a certain genre or style of music or culture you are going now now you've established yourself you probably see that, that smaller small, pond small fish so that's the whole thing of, of positioning and then perspective is just you are new I, I guess i'm also going to talk about that in the, the next point but your sales when you are starting yeah you're a small even. fish in a small and, pond and, uh, or a small fish in a big pond you any way you look at it but you don't have necessarily have that perspective right if you are going now into a dealership you probably see that you're a small small fish in a small pond the small pond is the dealership and you are new to it and you're just getting into the car industry or auto industry or sales or whatever or customer some support even that, uh, and and uh, as you grow well, yourself you can become a bigger fish uh, within that pond. another day no, exactly yeah. that's how people move forward <laughs> so now come up I'm into companies as well right they, David they progress from where they are they get the results and they become the managers not king david just like the hierarchy of a pyramid right so it's no different realistic so what he said was too you know he was looking at some of the examples that david gave in his book not david that's sitting over here uh another david yeah going to places like harvard malcolm gladwell gave in the book david and goliath is what i'm going to say just so many Davids.
David's here. Pie, not King uh, David. Not King David. Uh, not Solomon either. Uh, <laughs> Malcolm Gladwell. Um, so what he said was, too, you know, he was looking at uh, middle the idea of all these people going to schools, right? So he, he looked at the grades of people uh, going to places like Harvard, for example, and he looked at, you know, the top 10, 80, and the 20, the 10, 10, 80, and 10, right? The high, the middle, and the low. And then he looked at schools that weren't necessarily rated as the highest. Even he was looking at, you know, the people that were going to these middle average schools were getting the same grade Harvard point schools, average as the people actually who were getting, getting jobs the low getting averages so in places like Harvard, right? right? But the people who were getting the highest you know, these guys not so to do made themselves school, different, good right? schools and they were getting jobs the better than the, the people who were averaging the lower, the best right? So even though they had the same score, they went to, so the people who were at the top of the class non-Harvard schools were actually getting better jobs and getting accolades. So these guys were big fish in a small pond because, you know, these guys made themselves different, right? And so they weren't doesn't necessarily matter. the you best of the best if they had gone to Harvard, but they were the best of the best going to school right? they, they, go they went to. So it kind of shows you, you don't necessarily have to go to the best schools in the world to be the best and get the kind of jobs you want, because even if you have the best scores, you know, someone's always going to be smarter than you, faster than you, better looking than you, or whatever, right? So it doesn't matter. You just have to do the best when you do move from those students do, right? They go to the schools that are giving them the best opportunity. They know they may not be the best at Harvard. So they go where they know they're going to be the best. It was a huge lesson to, to learn that. It opens possibilities or realizations and I think that ties in with my next point and I thought that, that, that I actually kind of began from looking at expressing scale already to a provincial but or a state But I think when you do move from, from being maybe a big fish in a small to a pond country, to or maybe from a going country to deliberately not positioning and yourself or moving yourself into a bigger pond, it opens you up to the possibilities or realizations that you didn't have before. Suddenly you might be looking at going from looking at a local scale to a provincial or a state things could scale. bring a lot or of maybe you're going from a provincial state scale to a country go, hey, I or maybe from a country to now global and, and worldwide or just a territory or, and all of a sudden you begin to see possibilities oh yeah this guy over here or level. this gal over here has accomplished this yeah, which I haven't records, done people is that something that I can now do and just looking at those things can bring a lot of inspiration great source for that I mean and cause you to go hey I can grow myself in this way or I could gain those same experiences or take the ideas from them and just better your of own information. business locally on but, a you know, local level. So we can feel I mean, overwhelmed with human world records, and, and that people who've achieved major things in get life, us into trouble. huge so businesses, maybe and starting so on small is tools right, titans, but we want a great to source for that. I mean, see the Tim Ferriss is studying of the high world, achievers, and that's the whole concept behind the, the book and his podcast. So there you go. There's a great source of information. But, you know, we can feel overwhelmed. We're human, and that tendency to compare can sometimes get us into trouble. So maybe starting small is right, but when you want to begin to see the broader picture of the view of the world and what's happening globally or just on a bigger scale than you are looking at right now, I think that's a good time to go into a bigger pond. But I think the idea of starting at the in a small pond, there's nothing wrong with it because we all got to start somewhere, right? Uh, even if you were in a small pond or a big pond, you're still going to, like you said, you're still going to start at the same size, right? It's only the pond that's different, right? Um, you may be bigger or smaller and all that really means is just more people people in, in that pond yeah, that you have to compete to against. Uh, but again, ranking, like you said, I like the fact not. that once you're Same getting growing here, yourself podcast, and right? getting better and knowledgeable at what you're doing, so it's just like myself right now, right? I just started a website uh, learning is, on how to grow it, to learning and understanding what it takes to to, to grow interact with people and have people interact with the website and bringing people to the website and having the articles ranking and whatnot. Same thing we're learning here on the podcast, right? How can we get the podcast ranked? How do we get people to leave messages? No different uh, grow, different there yeah. but the idea is you know we well, don't have to be in a small pond we can grow be, um, uh, sorry the small fish we can grow fish, as fast as we choose to own or as slow as we choose to based on our own confidence level as well right so, right? so uh, uh, a, the nice thing is kind of kind of working at the point I have here is if we have the right team in place we can then grow as fast as we choose to as well because the team will help us grow to be a bigger fish not just it's not only on our own ability now we're way a, a team and that's what a business is right so if you're a income, you know a self on this you're an entrepreneur, entrepreneur you're a solopreneur but you don't have to be a solopreneur once you get to a place where you understand things you can start bringing a team in I like that team can help grow you to a place where you know you want to be in a place that you can see yourself why maybe walk away from your business someday in the future because you have built enough residual income to be the big fish now versus a small fish and maybe even other people on your team can also do that depending on how those people on your team are structured, I guess. To, 
I like that a lot. I think, like you know, you it's know important to, to be aware that come any team has its dysfunctions, and I think that's why I mean, we all it can be scary. Again, what you said about confidence level definitely plays into it. Do you feel confident enough them to lead if you end up needing to leave? Do you feel confident that you can put the right checklists and systems in place to guide your team? Do you feel like you know what to do if legal troubles come up or other problems emerge that you haven't been familiar with? I mean, we all face this every single day as entrepreneurs, so we can't let those things hold us back. We kind of have to move forward. And, and I in think spite of them not knowing we have all the knowledge that we necessarily need to, but that's why we have a team so that we can bring on those experts in those fields, whether it's legal or accounting or marketing right. like idea, or in like different said, departments, so that they can give us the best information you, possible right? so have, to make an informed you know, decision about what we need to move forward with. And I think that's the position that you want to be in ultimately is the position of a high level decision maker, not waste your time on a ton of little tasks that anybody could do. The idea, fish, like you said, is having a so team of people who are good at what they do, right? So if you have, you know, if you're a big fish based on what you do and you bring in a team of people who are big fishes on based on what they do, now you have the best of the best working with you and you obviously being the best of the best at what you do. You can, you know, now you guys are all big fish in a big pond, so that's everybody collectively working together to get to the ultimate goal. The nice thing about that is when you have a bunch of people who can work very well together, we want to uh, for one like person's you common so goal, you, you know, tend to find people, people that say, "Hey, you know what? What are you?" Other? And now I might say to other people, to David, say, "Hey, you know what else are you good at, David? I know you've been able to help me. Now, what are you good at? So let me help you grow your business." And then we might bring on two other people on our team, and they're really good at helping us. And we'll say to them, "Hey, Jack and Jane, hey, what are you guys good at? Because we want to now collectively help you guys. So now you're, you know, there's two people who just started helping each other. Now we're able to help two other people who are very good at what they do, who also help us, and we can help them grow as well." As the, as the the saying goes, that. I guess, our uh, um, rising others. ship, uh, rising and tide raises all ships. About that's, that's kind of what we end up doing with that too. Is if you can understand that principle, I think it's it can be very powerful. Where people are at, well, we so have it's worth asking. Power, and I've got Even the new like, the absolute podcast. I mean, by the time you've got your podcast going there, man, we could essentially have a podcast network. Nothing stopping us from starting that. You're the one, and we can also include other one that I've been. And also, if you feel strongly about teams, I think are often intimidated by a lot of skill, a lot of talent, a lot of experience. But you just never know where people. Are at, so it's worth join, asking, and join your even if like they're the absolute best in their field in, in, in your locality, or little maybe even on a bigger scale. A little more if you go and talk to them and say, you know what, you, maybe they're looking you're for the a one I need in my team, you're the one that I've been looking with, for. And if you feel strongly about that and convicted about that, you might be surprised. They might be willing to help you on the side. We probably might actually be willing to help you join and join your team because they want to be in a smaller business where they're a little more agile, or they have a little more flexibility, a little bit of a or maybe they're looking for a career change like right now so to bring approaching people right now, with, down with these ideas about you know, joining your team right now so you just you never know, know Maveen and I asked that we probably wouldn't be paying an arm and a leg to, happy, to get them to join at this moment in time different. we would kind of be out of the kindness of their good heart their heart or maybe for a little bit of a reward a little bit of money a little bit of exposure or something like that if we were to bring people on right now but down the line could that turn into a paying position absolutely so you just never know you can ask people and see where they're at in their current careers because they might not be happy and they might be ready for something different so we can absolutely and that's so what coming exactly that comes in right so if you have a mutual agreement it. saying nope. you know you know you're bringing in the accounting side and, and let's say that person wants to start an accounting have, business and say and we, we have a little bit of about, understanding you know, and because they're able to help us say, hey you know what you've been able to help us with our business and help our accounting on our blog we want to now help you set up your own blog and maybe your own website business so we can help you so we can do the exact same thing so it doesn't necessarily always have to be a monetary payment i don't think you should definitely pay people back in services i know you've done stuff like that before too in what i have and we are going to be talking about you know, <laughs> some bad deals we've kind of been roped into in the future episode, and some of those <laughs> no, certainly <laughs> fall under that category. But um, so I just want to say, too, sometimes um, exchanging sometimes a service a for a service or um, doing a barter like that can be a really good box. thing, too. That's how yeah. I don't think you're talking about service for a service in that context, either, are you? In what context? No. Do you want to clarify what kind of service is provided? Yeah, definitely. Sometimes you don't think outside of the box. No, I'm just kidding around. So I just want to say, too, you know, sometimes a small fish um, come up real has quick to think outside the box. I think that's how a yeah. small fish can become a big better, fish, right? Job no, faster, get um, all the results. When and when you're a big fish, or what we're trying to say is like a CEO really well, or a manager or a supervisor, a fish, sometimes you don't think, think outside of the box, and you get kind of caught in your comfort zone, faster, right? And, and it's those small fish who are thinking outside of the box that come up real quick and then can take over those positions and because and do the job better, do the job faster, get all the results, and then the supervisor who thought they were 
are you know big doing really well becomes the employee and all that small fish because they were able to think outside the box uh, can grow a lot faster because sometimes they do have the team behind them or maybe the motivation there right yeah, so absolutely. Uh, sometimes and, and I really like I, I think the idea of you know, where your focus is is, is kind of what I'm saying right you know the small fishes are usually well, focused actually, on kind of a question, getting better man. where sometimes the big fishes only focus on being number one but not necessarily understanding that they need to do different things to continue to stay number one versus doing the same things over and over again that's progressively yeah absolutely and and I really like that point remote workforce you know my next point is that and things like that well I mean, actually it's in kind a of way, a question we are all and I think I want to pose it to us as well as no our, our listeners but big pond, is being no a matter what big fish in a I mean, small pond really bigger fish when we're talking pond, about no like question, a global economy I mean, because global economy I mean, that's what do you progressively think, where we're moving in wow, in the direction a, with a like remote question. workforces and outsourcing and and things like that I mean it definitely takes a way we are all small fish in a big pond no matter in a big pond no matter what I mean we can become bigger fish within that big pond no question but work for somebody in right? this global and economy, I mean, what do you be think, the small man? Fish for the rest of your life. Wow, that is and, a, a great know, question. I think get a nice paycheck, be comfortable. <sighs> wow, don't worry. Uh, it about it takes it, it definitely takes a little bit of thinking you, because take care I, of you, the government. I, I think the way we've been programmed will think and believe things from school it's forward is all hey, you know what to do, right? And then school, get a job, work for somebody, right? And that's usually be the small fish for the rest of your life. And you know, get a nice paycheck, be comfortable. Wow, don't worry about it. The company will take care of you. The pension will take care of you the government can take care of you everybody will take care of you by right. yourself so, uh, you it's kind of what these everybody's guys been teaching us to fish. do right really um, and then we start looking at different entrepreneurs and people and vision like bill gates who dropped out of high school so or in college and stuff like that fish and Steve jobs and Steve jobs and you start looking at different success stories and say well those guys didn't go to school they didn't take the regular route that we're being they're really hard to take game right so you start looking at these guys who started as small fish really nobodies but they had a dream and a vision and they started implementing that so they think, took their small so fish idea of and small fish self so, and, and, and they uh, were in a huge most pond people, and now if you look at those companies like Apple pond, and, and Microsoft they really are the big game in the, in the world right there now, especially when you're looking have at to worry um, about computers and income, software where, you know, and big uh, fish and iPhones and whatnot is so they've been able to I think make themselves so different because of the vision they were having so I think for most people being a small fish in a big pond is probably very comfortable and they're going to be but happy also live, being think, there the life and, and don't have to worry about creating an income well. where you know yeah, the big and fish in a small pond what I was is out there perspective it's typically I think the entrepreneur someone like Bill Gates and uh, Steve totally Jobs like you mentioned wrong, right? um, and Jeff, uh, Jeff Bezos from Amazon uh, and pond. they're out there the doing things that other people wouldn't dare to do they also live I think the life that other people don't dare to live as well and so yeah and I think it also goes back to what I was saying about perspective and business positioning it's a really our perspective can totally be who's wrong or we could we think we're already a big fish in a small well. pond but, but the reality of the situation could be is one of we're like a medium like, sized fish in a medium sized pond and we didn't even areas know it of our lives. And, and so could say our you know perspective is, uh, positioning is really about, about business or it's, it's really about becoming somebody who's more endorsable and we can rank ourselves in a variety of different areas as well our spirituality is not perspective really is one of those things like because we can apply different perspectives to different number. areas of our lives and we could say our fitness today, level is before, on a scale of one really to ten a seven to, and we could say that our looks are on a scale of one to ten eight and we could say you know we could rank ourselves in a variety of different areas if we wanted to our spirituality is nine i mean trouble you know really you can only compare yourself against yourself to get an really accurate number you can compare your fitness and health level today to where you were before it's not really worth comparing to to other people or what they've been able to travel right i mean some people travel a bit and then again you know, massive found muscles and I found some people work out a lot well and, and have trouble perspective losing weight and have trouble you know taking shedding people, those extra pounds so more open to you know you can't really and compare yourself see, you know, that way when it comes it comes right down to it and i think it's not just us it's good to have less perspective in the sense that especially like that's world travel that's a really good thing we travel i know matt you found this and i found this big time as well it opens up our perspective and we become more open to people we become more open to possibilities and we begin to see you know people are living very really differently in different parts of the world the and it's fish, not just us you know, and we and become less been, right? self-occupied and I think that's a that's a really China, good thing and so India, and that that kind of, of perspective is totally valuable well. the emphasis is really is on different things on doing um, well, no matter where you travel in the world so you're 100% right on that I think North America the emphasis really is on being the big fish I mentioned earlier I think it's always has 
then, right? You go to places overseas, uh, go to you know, China, do what you India, do and, you, right? and uh, a lot of um, Latin American com- better, countries you know, as well. Um, the, the emphasis we is definitely on doing uh, well, but it's on also aging, family and community uh, and, and uh, getting things to be happy, was, right? And, if, you know, and you science, know, just like we, we I mentioned could, earlier, you know, there's always going to be somebody that's going to break your record. There's always going to be somebody out there that's going to do what you do better than you, right? Eventually, there's going to be somebody that's better, right? And I know, really, because we had this conversation I believe people, on our um, bridging uh, uh, podcast that we did, right? And one of the things I'd mentioned the there was, if you know, through science, if we could, humble yourself if science was able to help everybody to live so long, would we really need people small uh, to again. continue to nice thing is breed you can, people? You can, right? uh, That's what we humans do. So really, because if we don't continually breed people, then we can't break records. We can't think of new innovations. Artists. I think that's what the beauty of being a big fish is, because if you humble yourself and allow your ego to understand. Or that you, you know, eventually will become the small fish again. Rules. But the nice thing is yeah, you can, I you mean, can um, motivate kind of and mentor all these drive, other upcoming right? business people we and still have students and, and, and racers and, and trainers and, and, and artists or whatever genre you're in. You can always to, be the mentor to, to these people. So you can still stay valid and if that's what you want is there, or, you know, and help other people achieve their dreams and goals. Yeah, because, I mean, to procreate is kind of a basic human drive, right? We don't run We still have those fear and or Darn sure. flight <laughs> so, and, or even though there are fight responses to, to be, fear stimuli in our lives where it was, and that, our human that is there in spite of the fact that really all. there's not many impending in dangers in our lives response. anymore and everything is pretty safe it's pretty convenient to the point where we don't well, we don't run into saber tooth tigers every day that's for darn sure right even though there are some dangers in life and there always will be but it's relatively safe compared to where it was but that our human response hasn't caught up or changed at all we are still in that fight or flight response and it's the same thing that would happen if people came to the point where well we don't need to procreate but i still feel the need to procreate right so that's not going to change wow that's you know it's a great thing that you said because you know i had a conversation over the weekend about this and uh, one of my friends she's a teacher and i just asked her how things are going as being a teacher and a little bit off topic on being the big fish small fish but just talking about procreation here and um you know i asked her just how things are going and she said you know things are good but of course some of the students are hard to deal with sometimes because happens, their parents are drug addicks or whatnot and you, uh, you know I don't want to give out names and stuff but not that they're, they're drug addicts by choice they've just had these problems because they're, they have addictions right and you know and these and these same problems are can be seen in the kids where they uh, react to things right and, and I asked them said, you know and they said you know we don't understand why um, this happens and I, you know, I just said you know it's hard because you can't tell somebody to have an abortion you know if you're supposed to be pro-life or not you know pro choice or whatever the, 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 op, the question is I'm not going to give my options on that but I said you know that's what kind of happens on there the people choose not to because again um, they choose to I believe have that small fish mentality and they say you know, the government will give me money and I can then feed my addiction and that was kind of what I said I said because why else would you have a, a, a child give them the worst life possible only to feed your own addiction because you're selfish and you may have an ego that says I need this drug and, and I can't get away from it. No, and great I said, movie. You know, and the government says, "Hey, well, we're going to give you six, eight hundred dollars a month, um, but do as you wish for this child. And if you choose not to put that money on the child, that's your choice as a parent. And, and if you choose to feed your own ego, you think, that's well, your choice. Right? And I think that can be seen in the movie um, and not put this Moonlight as well, right? The, the, the parent and I'm not sure if you saw that movie. No, great movie. I believe it won awards as well. Small, great movie there. But it kind of showed the same thing. This kid was growing up in a household where the mom was an addict and. And I need to start thinking, you know, big, and, and you show well, why child, wouldn't this mom just you know, maybe get rid of this kid and at least teach my not put this kid through all these problems? And, kind of and you see that, you know, there's there's opportunities that people can still seek, and so they have this small really fish mentality instead of saying, how to be "Hey, I just had a baby. Fish. I need to you know, change. I need to get over this addiction. I need to do whatever it takes. I need to start thinking big and show my own child how if I can't be the big fish, at least teach my child on how to be the big fish." And I think that's kind of what we were talking about when we also did our episode on our 10 things today, our parents taught us. Totally that was really our parents teaching us how to be the big the fish, or you know, in, some a, of the other in a small pond type world. world. I don't watch sure. news, so I'm sorry. And I don't something know that's kind of related to that. <laughs> but there's one is right this, there. This whole thing there's of, like, it's worry. human nature yeah, of course to there are. see the impending <laughs> danger, uh, dangers that are ahead of us. And I think even looking at the news headlines of today, you could totally draw some conclusions about maybe the political state of the United States or some of the other things that are happening in the world. I don't watch the news, so I'm sorry. I don't know a lot of examples but there's like one I right there. 
kid. There's they basically still problems. Told us, don't worry. Hey, yeah, of course there are. End because <laughs> of all these uh, I recently heard on a podcast, and, and it was you know, James Altucher show, but basically they were talking about how stuff like that. We, and we do that see those happen, dangers coming, but we tend to overestimate them because we don't know the solutions that we'll have in 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years. Like I remember when I was a kid, they basically told us, hey, the world's coming into an end because of all these pollution problems and you know the ultra recycle and ultraviolet rays and stuff like that. We just didn't know all those things. And so happen, it's really the same but for today's problems. Sort of sort of Maybe sometimes talk about that, that cynically, like it was a thing of fear mongering. And partly, I'm sure it was a, a thing of fear mongering. But no the other part is we just Maybe didn't realize we'll, the technology we'll stasis, that we would now have, the way the population would change. Who knows? You know how we would uh, yeah, recycle and maybe go more green. We just didn't know all those things. And so it's really the same for today's problems. Maybe we see overpopulation as a problem today. The solution that we come up with may enable us to go, hey, overpopulation, no big deal. Maybe we'll. Bank, we'll build space, um, space stations or begin to populate other planets. Who knows? Exactly. But I think that's where you're going with that. But, I mean, that's another topic another day. It is. Um, um, I do want to just cover a little bit of different thinking as well. You know, one of the things um, I was just telling you recently, just talking about investing, right? I'd gone to the bank because the guy called me and said, hey, you know, I'm your new financial advisor. I want to meet you. And I said, okay, sure. You know, let's give you maybe half an hour, maybe an hour of my day as I'm I really you do know, want to know what's happening with my money at the bank and if the bank is, is calling me to say hey we want to talk to you and tell you what we're doing with your money that's probably a good step you know, and, and the bank I've chosen to go with it they're pretty decent about that kind of stuff they're very forward thinking they're very entrepreneurial focused as well so you know not a bad phone call so I said you know what sure I went and sat with them and I said in the next five years how much more money as I kept sitting there you know more and more stuff I listened about financial you know I listened to Tony Robbins podcast you know the Robert Kiyosaki podcast on radio show and the same thing right it's always talking about finance and making decisions with your own money. So when I went there to talk to him, you know, he he said, okay, you have X amount of dollars. I said, okay. uh, And I said, in the next five years, how much more money can this X amount of dollars be valued at? Just based on the investments I have here. He said, you know, we can maybe make an extra $2,000 in five years. I said, okay, well, help me maybe understand. Instead of letting them control my money, I want to know how I can control my own money, right? Because obviously we all know, as we just released on a previous episode, a couple episodes back, you know, the bank, the corrupt bank, Banks or the corrupt banking system, right? So uh, we were talking about that. So we, re- I want to just ask them questions. And say, you know, what, extra dollar. Why wouldn't I trust myself with my own money, right? Should I not be the big yeah, fish? Probably. Why should I be a small fish in your system, right? Why shouldn't I be the big fish in your system, right? Because why can't I be you? And I said, in in five years, if I only make two thousand dollars with you, as an example, do you think I can make two thousand dollars and one extra dollar with my own ability? some sort of. And he said, yeah, you probably could, but why? would you want to do that? Why wouldn't you want to give us your money and, and we can handle the stress and all that for you? And I said, money from there's many different that reasons, right? I said, goal. if and I were to take that, you, that, you know, the X amount of money I have and be able to create $2,000 of profit with that money, don't you think I'd maybe learn something or maybe gain some sort of new knowledge and maybe be able to teach people this and maybe be able to make some sort of business from this and then be able to turn around and make more money from that if that was my ultimate goal? And he just kind of looked at me and he said, well, I guess so, but I don't I don't understand. He just had a blank funds, look on his face because he's never been challenged. Your money and I said, well, why house, wouldn't so I trust no my own I mean, ability, right? I'd rather go trust me. And this is a similar conversation I know we were having with your roommate as well. Finances and, 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 how uh, manage it. and I gave you the exact same example. This example recently well, yeah, because, because the thing that she was looking at or the opportunity she was looking at is basically investing in mutual funds, which is where most banks are going to place your money in the first place. So it's no different. I mean, I could definitely go on about this and I have my own thoughts and opinions about about finances so said, and, and no, how to manage it. Maybe I'll just give this is, this is example recently because I think I came across an investment very likely that, that seems fairly promising in, to me. You know, at the very, very minimum, it would be better than just keeping my money in a bank you know, account. So why wouldn't I at least before, whether, consider whether and, and think about it and look at it? And the minimum is about $1,000 US is a starting point. So I said, yeah, that's something that I think is doable and manageable and something that I'm very likely to invest in. You know, barring some issues or Buckets. If I just see something set coming up, up that you know, savings, I didn't see before, whether, whether it's a review you or somebody saying, no, well, that's, that's not a good investment because X, Y, Z. But, you know, you put it evaluate on, on a case-by-case you know, basis. Not and if you have money to play with, which is really the, about the philosophy of you know, Tony Robbins with the three buckets, the next seven years or set up your, like your emergency that's savings, not, set up that's not a bad your dream fund, set up your aggressive growth fund. Well, if I would be about to take a bit of my aggressive growth fund and put it into an investment, that's 
promising. Bit, but, but you know, what's not promising, but they're saying it's probably going to be about 8.5% return, no, return no, sure. on your $1,000 US think, in the you know, next the seven years or something like that. Keep that's not, more and more about uh, that's not again, a bad investment. I mean, the more money you can put in, the better that something like that would be, right, man? But it wouldn't be, you know, it still wouldn't be a bad thing to take a little bit of my money and make an 8.5% return in the next seven years. No, for sure. It's good to diversify, but I think, you know, one of the things I was learning and just keep learning more and more about it. And again, there's nothing wrong with the banking system if they don't make the more money off right you than why you make I trust on your own money. Yeah. We're at that and the problem is, right now, they do. And I think, you know, this is another conversation I had with one of my really good friends, Uma, and, look at anybody and uh, who's uh, he's got his own radio show that he's starting here. You know, uh, so we'll talk a little bit about, about him and I'm maybe even have him on a show about financing in the future. But, you know, that's the problem I have right now is why shouldn't I trust myself? We're at that age where, you know, we can, we should be making that money for ourselves, right? And I look at anybody who's trying to sell me an investment good. and I say, crazy. you know, if someone's trying to sell me an investment, if I'm making 8%, 8% well, what are they making? What's their risk factor? What kind of risk are they so going to be taking? Because, I do all the you know, investing, all the risk, I know when the you when make I invest money in mutual funds, money. Actually when I asked more money him, on my, uh, what kind of fees do you guys charge me? He told me, though, we would not take a 1.84% fee. I thought, hey, that's pretty good. Well, it's not crazy, but I found out it wasn't 1.84% of my profit, it was 1.84% of my investment. So I said, wait, I do all the investing, all the risk, and you got to challenge and you make all the well, money on my money. They actually made more money and on it, my it helps you um, understand interest. how to be a big fish. Uh, you know, or, or investment that I made in my payments. So I said, well, no, it, sure, it looks I'm good. I'm making 5, 6, 7, 8%. Fee, fee uh, like that's but one you're thing making that might, guaranteed you know, 100%. Decision one way or another. So, you know, but you I'm just also challenge their thinking, and you got to challenge your own thinking as well, not even the way you look at this. And then it helps you understand how to be a big fish. And not have that small thinking mentality. If you just leave it to some that's something I'm going to be looking at is what their fee structure is, right? Like that's one thing that might sway my decision one way or another. But I'm I mean, also they don't talking always about have your best investing in heart independently. I'm not even looking at investing and like you, you know, said, in a bank. And I think that's the difference that you, you're all, also so talking about. The like yeah, if you just independently, yeah, if you available. just leave it what to some it kind of financial advisor, some of them are pretty well meaning. I've worked with one before. Probably nothing. Or whether you're working with a bank, I mean, they don't always have your best interests at heart. They often take a lot of fees. And like you said, they're not thinking outside the box at all. So they don't even realize the potential, the possibility that are available. Think, you know, what would it be for us to both it throw in $1,000 to invest in using your power forever? I mean, probably not nothing. We, we could both do it and we could both now, grow so this business and it would mean something to us. Yeah. Have we chosen yeah, exactly. a more bootstrap so, route for now? If I'm going to do that, I'd rather just do a bond and then we can reinvest it. So whether it's five years or 10 years or whatever. That's bigger thinking, I think. You know, small thinking is just leave it in a mutual fund for, I don't know, forever because they're not going to tell you when to pull it out. That's up to you now. So you have to monitor the time. Or whatnot, yeah. Yeah, exactly. No, do, so right? if I'm, I'm gonna, gonna do that, I'd rather just do a bond and then fix it, you know, right? no, whether it's not. five years or ten years or whatever, and get my you know guaranteed percentage back then to waste time on a fund that, well. that fluctuates um, you know, so often they're not gonna tell you anything about it. You've got to be the one with your eyes on it the whole time, and so that's ridiculous to me. No, I agree with you. And that's I'm not saying I'm not trying to give anybody financial advice. I don't think David is either, right? No, I'm not we're definitely not financial planners, we haven't gone to school for this, but we do have a education behind us. I have work experience there as well. Um, you know, all we're saying is if, if you don't know what to do with your money, and you use then if you, if you of money believe like that mutual funds is a safe investment, example, then that's where you should your put your money. But if you have a business idea or, or you believe that you should invest in yourself or your own business or your own business idea, then maybe think about how you can take maybe a small percentage, maybe let's say 10% of whatever you're investing with the bank and use that small amount of money, like David said, in the sample, $1,000 for example, to invest in your own business and see where that investment can take you. Could that $1,000 investment make you, like small you know, $1,500, right? And that's a huge return on investment because that's what a lot of business owners look at and that's what a lot of investors look at as well, right? So, uh, I mean, that's all they're really concerned about. But when you invest in yourself, you see that you do a lot better, right? I think a lot of problems that are created is because we've allowed our, ourselves to think like small fish and say, you know, I'm going to let somebody else take care of you know, everything. I have so many other things 
things to worry about, my family, work, job, cooking, after work, or whatever, and, and, you know, cleaning, and, and friends, and, and family, and all these other things. I want to travel. Yeah. I don't want to take care of my own finances. I'll let the professionals do it. You know, and, and that's what a lot of us do, because that's kind of what we've been taught as well, right? But those are the same people that are, you know, unfortunately having a lot of problems when they do get to the age of retirement. Being the, norms um, the normal of age of retirement, I'll put that in yeah, quotations, that we because you know, we're yeah. told that 65 is when we should retire, but we, with the in reality, we're, we're starting to see that there are people be becoming fish big fish out there who are retiring in their yeah, early 20s, and early 30s, and, 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 and early 40s, well. and, and even late. Just one either more way, question you know, I mean, they're retiring, me, and, and, and they're beating the norms that our parents have taught us. And These are things that we have to consider, because times have changed, and we should definitely keep changing with the times, or we're forever going to be a small fish in a huge pond. In a big pond. Yeah, I, mean, I think those are some great points, and that's how I pond, tend to but think then, as know, well. Opportunity. Just are one more question in the size of me, that pond, and, and also this is all that capacity, kind of different what's, thinking. What good is that? Is like really it's cool to be there. Is either year alternative or that attractive? Years, being what about a, a big fish in a small pond or a small pond, or a small fish in a big pond? I mean, you can be a big fish in a small pond, but then you know your opportunities are limited by the size of that pond. And if you've already reached that capacity, what's what good is that? So like it's to cool to be like, there for a year or two, or maybe even five fish. years. Why, but what about growth? What about moving beyond so that point? Big. And is it right. that and much think, fun to be a I small mean, fish in a big pond for that long? You know, just wandering through life, not well, knowing how to improve yourself, how to grow yourself. So that's just it's a different way of coming about across your big fish. It's so foreign to you that you're like, all my friends are small fish. Why? What? How did this person become so big? Right. And I think I mean we could definitely compare and contrast that with some of our experiences in, in, in network marketing as well because like there's definitely right? really this type think, of thinking there but really so that's just I mean, it's a different and way really of thinking about that. about I mean, this question it's not necessarily the right way of thinking about um, it but I thought it was a it was a worthy question to think about do you really want to be either alternative best in everything they do. I think good question um you know I spent a few minutes while you were chatting he thinking doesn't necessarily some things that I could say right and I really think it really depends on the person the world I really do believe that I mean everybody I believe has a different calling in life niches um you know, he could be the mm. best, some people right? have so a calling where they believe they could be the best of the best in everything they do. I think that's something like Tim Ferriss does, right? He, so he goes out and, he and again, he doesn't necessarily compete in, right? against the best of the best. He's, he's not, not going com against competing against like uh, the world's best uh, runners and all that in the world. He's finding niches that he knows he could be the best in, right? So certain dance competitions, he knew he could be the best, so he joined those. So he can now say he's the best of the best in dancing. So he picked the pawns that he wanted to be the biggest. In, right? He mm -hmm. didn't. Mm -hmm. he, he's not going against Hussein Bolt and trying to win the hundred meter. He's not going to, you know, because Hussein right? Bolt has um, been so that's a one way what he's been doing in sports um, and in track and field for so end, long. We did an that there's no way, death, you know. And example, even if someone well. does beat him in his world records, and it's wonderful, but it's not going to be someone who chose to randomly go into it. It's going to be somebody who worked on their natural craft and got better at it, right? So that's a one way of looking at it. I know, really. What in the end, I know we did an episode really on, on death, for legacy, example, as well. And in the end, we all know where we end up. We end life up in a pine box kind of or a cedar box or whatever you know, material that are, box is made from. Say, you know, or we all get cremated, be, depending on whatever uh, your beliefs are and the way you want to be you that. go back to the earth, right? So we go back, and in death, over really, what difference does it make? I think it really depends on legacy and what you're teaching your kids and your family and your life lifestyle. The kind of lifestyle you're able to live, you know, some people are, they say, you know, they're uh, destined to be uh, multi-millionaires and they well. want to be the that. And I know one of the comments you had mentioned um, on a, a previous podcast, so David, was if, that if you know, over true, a certain then, income, you know, I think the happiness do really doesn't change find, yeah, uh, a whole lot. And this has been and, scientifically and, shown. And I've actually read a, get to the I think even in uh, David David and Goliath, the book by Malcolm Gladwell, he says something very similar in there as well. The happiness doesn't change according to your income. So if he just wants to make more and more, then I think the best thing to do would be is find wants to be a medium he fish. could probably do and, that and, on the same income he made and 20 years ago get to the lifestyle but that you want to live and yeah, be able to do all the things you want to do and continue to do
do that, right? right? There's some people who are just famous, like Robert Kiyosaki he said money is a game. He's, he's not even and excited general, about it. He just says it's a philosophy. game. And he, I mean, I he just wants to make more and more and more and see how much he can do. But he still lives the lifestyle he's, he wants to live. And he could probably do that on the same income he made 20 years ago. But it's the people that are closest to you. Yeah, a lot of people in our family certainly said the same thing, right? They didn't want to be rich and famous, but they wanted to be rich and free. Whoever in general, I agree with that philosophy. I mean, I think we all most want that recognition to some, an appreciation, appreciation from people to some extent but in the end getting what getting appreciation, appreciation matters most I would say it's public. the people that are yeah, closest sure. to you, you know, I'd rather your family your spouse your children and, you know, and maybe your best this, friends and your business colleagues or your, your, your you know whoever it is that you would consider to be you know the most important people in your life getting appreciation from them matters way more than getting appreciation from like a wider general public getting that for sure you know I'd rather spend the time getting because successful, really you, you know, bring doing this people, and right? having our own two websites, separate websites, you, you know, and, and finding success, making the type of income that work for you to where we can go hang out together and, and bone. we don't have to necessarily be tied down, right? And that's the beautiful, yeah. beautiful thing about having a good team on your side, teaching and training your team, getting them to a place where one day they can retire themselves because they were able to help you and you can bring other people in, right? The idea is not to have you retired and retired and then have the people that work for you to work to skin to bone and just to make you live the lifestyle you want. I think the, if we're, we're going to think Wi-Fi big, we really want to help people get to the same place we are over time as well. And, help, you know, and that's you the idea, like I was saying earlier, is get a whole bunch of people who are big thinkers and work together and work on common goals, get everybody to where they want to be, then go live life, man. Go travel and do this. And there's a lot of people who podcast while they're traveling. They just go to a place where they got Wi-Fi and do their podcast or do their blog and then they post it and they back off to do what they need to do, You know, checking out things and point. deep so, sea diving and scuba I mean, diving that's and mean different fishing things for me, or sitting on the beach and doing absolutely out nothing, all really, whatever they want. Yeah, and I'm planning to take that really next step towards is freedom in the next the three months or so. And, 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 and I think it's going to require like, quite okay, a bit of streamlining, which fortunately I have the experience of having streamlined my life for duration four times by this point. So I mean, to people that's going to mean different things. For me, it usually means just cutting out all unnecessary expenses. Anything that's really non-essential is just going to go by the wayside for that, a while that place and that sooner. might even mean you like know, okay than, I have one year subscriptions for certain business tools I'll utilize them for their duration of, but it's possible that I won't renew unless I have the income to be able to reinvest in before, right? and renew in those tools for awesome so it's really that, that kind of short term sacrifice for work, for some long term benefits I think I'm coming to that that place sooner you know rather than rather than later of reaching whatever it is that financial goal of having a certain degree of freedom that I think that I couldn't question, have before, right? right? I had some freedom before. I had an awesome, I got, really, it was great with happen. freelance work, and, you know, well, but it's, it's, it's going to be right? a different Resume kind of freedom as I work towards again. just boosting really my my business income and working with clients and systematizing and then bringing on a team to take on more clients and scale. So, I think the question is a great question, Does it really matter to be a big fish or a small fish the size of the pond? Does it really matter? And, you know, who's doing the measuring, right? Who's doing the measuring? Who are you measuring yourself against? I think it really does come down to mindset as well, right? And, in most <clears> and that's the kind of thing, the, the you know, example you just gave is really is a mindset example, right? It's like, what do I want for myself in my life right now? What am I willing to give up? What am I willing to do to get the things I want, to be in the place I want to be? I think, you know, one of the things I always heard in network marketing was, you know, what would an extra $400 do for you, right? And in most cases, they said, you know, $400 a month extra could typically bring the, uh, a mother of, uh, you know, a mother home from work. So, you know, if you got two children, you got them in woman, baby, really baby daycare or whatnot. So can come home and daycare can be pretty expensive as well, right? So you're paying seven, eight, nine hundred dollars a month for that. Times that by two kids. You know, you know, if the and if the know, person didn't guy gets choose not to go to work, you could bring the mother home, and then eventually the father could work from home and start their own business, or vice versa. Maybe the woman really enjoys working, so the guy can come home and he can work on his own business, take care of the kids, and the lady could be out working because maybe she makes a little bit better income, no problems there, and you know. The guy gets the business, his business, his online business to a place where yeah, um, a really they can both point. now retire and, and they can both come home and stay home with the kids. So there's so many different possibilities, but I do believe it is all mindset on how you want to get there. And may, sometimes if you that see makes more sense. money maybe, as the only objective, the woman is then I think you're always going to be a small fish in a small pond, regardless of the size, if it's your own pond or not. That's interesting. Yeah, that's a really great point. And even my upline platinums did that very thing, right? I think we live in a forward-looking culture now where that just make, sometimes that, 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 that makes
that makes more sense. Maybe, maybe now, the, the woman is bringing more home, home no, than the man is. And in this case, that was, that was sort of what happened. So the husband, you know, retired their first, and then the, then his wife you know, came home eventually within the next you know, probably six months to a year. So I mean, their short-term sacrifice really paid off, and it didn't have hours that long for them to be able to do that. Now, are they quote unquote retired and free? No, they're just free to build their business because they still need to keep building that business if they want to get their income to a point where it's from you know self-sustaining but it, you know if, if most of us it's still a if we had a we're presented with the opportunity of working a few hours a day instead of you, you know want, taking so. up half exactly. of our day idea, or half right? of our it's productive like time to spend that work of course we would take life. it right like yeah, three, so if you had to work three four hours a night you know anywhere from four five six nights a week maybe in some cases seven nights a week it's still a better deal than going to a nine-to-five job in most cases and you have your days free to do whatever you want so well, exactly, and, and that's the idea, yourself. right? They say and that nine to five builds your life. Uh, sorry, you builds your, just sustains your life. But your five to nine builds your life, right? Yes. And that's kind of what um, you, take those you want to do. Right? You want to work harder for yourself. So take a little bit of time, even if just half the amount of time you invest in your work and invest it back into yourself and, and building on yourself and, and learning to be a medium fish. I think is probably the best. And I think if you take some of the other talks that we've done, especially when we talked about being a specialist, a journalist, or a hybrid type worker. Mm -hmm. so you take those concepts and some of the other concepts we've talked yeah, about I on other episodes you want and start implementing as as the, the same ideas anybody, into the, yourself, the, the, I, the thinking of being a big fish or a small fish. And you so, slowly start to understand kind of what me and David are doing here. We're no, really showing it. people that awesome. you have the power, right, so we again, can using up. your power, to do what you want out there to create the life that you really see for yourself. Yeah, I think whatever goal you want to work towards, as long as it's not violating anybody, including yourself, then it's a worthy goal. And then it's worth working. To towards. Unleash your right on. Do you have any more points, David? Because I know audio. I got through all mine. No, that's it. To to awesome. To all right, so we can wrap up. In, Definitely go to usingyourpower.com. That's where you can find our website with all the podcast episodes. You can also click on to leave a comment and let us know what you think about each of them. And while you're there, leave a comment because don't forget to click on 10 Simple Ways to Unleash Your Personal Power to get your free audio and have a listen to that to improve your life and begin improving your life in small ways, which can all add up to improving your life in a much better much power, bigger way. Really you can also click on the Facebook and, and Messenger and icon to leave an instant message via Facebook so or go to YouTube because our content's there and you might even be listening to this on YouTube right now so leave a comment absolutely. I love that. below and well, just let us know what you think about this episode. Right on. Listening, and uh, you know, I think the idea of the um, 10 day. Simple Ways to Unleash Your Personal Power really goes strongly in hand in hand in how to you know go from a small fish to a big fish so definitely take a look at that. It will definitely add a lot more value to this talk. Absolutely. I love that. Well, it's been great chatting with you, Mav, and I hope you, all of you listening enjoyed this episode. Awesome. Have yourself a wonderful day.